In just that one handful, Mark Weens had grabbed more chilies than Jamie Oliver has for every single video he's done using any type of chili. <laughs> the dude just does not use enough chilies. Dude, man, what a labor of love. <laughs> I'm sure like a Thai person's watching this and says, love, love, this is what we do every meal, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Mark Wine's Thai green curry chicken recipe, authentic Thai home cooking. Every time I've reacted to a curry dish, this guy's name comes up, and if I'm recalling correctly, in one of the videos, I'm pretty sure it's the Jamie Oliver Thai green curry. They mentioned that some of the B-roll that Uncle Roger used was actually from this guy's video, so if Uncle Roger's referencing that, as his go-to for what authentic is supposed to be, this should be an awesome video. Real quick, I do wanna shout out my latest sous chef level patrons. I do need to read this name and I'm sorry in advance if I butcher it. Voratit Chunharukchat and Grace Robertson, thank you so much for your support. You, along with the rest of the awesome patrons, truly do make a difference on this channel. And for those of you who are watching and are not yet a patron, please consider becoming a patron by visiting the link in the description below. And finally, follow me on Instagram at Chef Brian Sal. And with that out of the way, let's react to some shit. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a Thai green curry recipe. We've got all the ingredients to pound up the paste and got mm. a free range nice. chicken. My mother-in-law is actually gonna do the cooking. Mother-in-law is doing the cooking, eh? That's how you know this is gonna be some real shit. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Oh, Mark Weens. Okay, uh, first off, let me apologize for mispronouncing your name. It's Mark Weens, not Mark Wines. And today my mother-in-law and I are gonna be making Thai green curry with chicken. The first step in making this recipe is to pound up the curry paste. Is that the mother-in-law? <laughs> what? Why she look so sad? <laughs> like, why, why does she look like she's being held hostage? <laughs> and I'm seeing some really cool ingredients. Like for example, on the bottom corner, you can see the uh, cilantro stems or the cilantro, cilantro root, which many of you had actually referenced in uh, my previous reactions to Thai curries is that you're supposed to be using the cilantro root uh, rather than the actual leaves and the stems, which is actually something that was uh, new, to, new to me. So um, that's why I love doing these. And sometimes I get torn apart for it for saying something wrong, but that's being human. The most important part is that I learned something from this and hopefully you do too. Ingredients laying out here. I think it's mainly gonna be the- So Thai bird chilies, looks like basil. There's some long chilies in there, I think. I think those are kaffir lime leaves under the long chilies, and uh, those uh, green whitish balls are Thai eggplant. Thai, Thai green chilies that we're gonna use to make it green, okay. and then we're also gonna- And then white pepper, galangal, shallots. I don't know what the, um, like the lumpy brain looking uh, fruit is. I can't, I can't, I've seen it. I just don't know what the name is. And then there's garlic, the cilantro stems, and then appears to be some toasted spices up there. A lot of spices. My mother-in-law doesn't write down any recipes, but somehow she just knows all of the ingredients and the amounts in her head. Yeah, that's the same thing with my bulgogi recipe that I used, uh, you know, that I use at my shop, my sandwich shop, Mission Sandwich Social Now. It's also the same recipe I used uh, on my episode of Beat Bobby Flay. And uh, same deal, my mom doesn't have a recipe. I had to stand next to her and physically watch her make it and then get an approximation of the quantities used for the recipe. We're gonna watch her and then I'm gonna write down all the ingredients and I'll, I'll include them in this recipe and then also I will write them over on eatingthaifood.com. You can find the full recipe and all the details and all the ingredients there as well. Dude, this guy, this is <laughs> just the happiest dude. Like he is so excited to be there right now. <laughs> I wonder if he's that enthusiastic about everything he does in life, but his energy is totally infectious. Gonna be making a full chicken and it's not a huge chicken, it's a free range chicken. She said it was 1.4 kilos. The first step is just to prepare all of the ingredients. Okay, so it's, uh, it's like a little over three pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Pound. So the first step garlic. is to peel your garlic. Okay, Next shallots. up for shallots. Okay. And the same thing she's just gonna- Now, uh, I don't know about other parts of the world, but in the States, shallots have gotten huge. I mean, the size of fucking baseballs sometimes. And that's not what I remember shallots were when I was younger. They were not that big. It's just somebody had pumped them full of steroids over the past five, six years, and now they are 
fucking ginormous. This is a much more accurate representation of what I believe the rest of the world views as a shallot. <laughs> Just a little random fact. Galangal. Yep. That's about a thumb-sized chunk. Cool. Oh, he mentioned it earlier, she's gonna pound all of this. So even though you're gonna be pounding or grinding something up, it is actually good habit to give it a little bit of a chop first. It'll actually help with the grinding process. It won't make it as laborious and it'll actually give you a bit more of a consistent product. Rather than breaking down a big chunk, you know, you're, again, you're kind of assisting the grinding process or the pounding process for this. And these are only the bottoms of mm -hmm. the stalks of the lemongrass. And then again, she's just slicing it finely to be able to pound it. Very cool. So uh, something I always do when I work with green curry is yes, I always use the bottom part, just like Mark Weems said, but I typically remove that outer layer, uh, the very outer layer, because I tend to find it very fibrous. I did not see her do that here, the mother-in-law, the miserable mother-in-law do it here, unless it was done off camera, but interesting. And also I, I noticed that she didn't peel the galangal. I'm noticing things that are different from how I would do it. But then again, I am no major authority or, you know, super pro when it comes to Thai cuisine. Again, I just kind of know the basics. And uh, this for me, this particular video for me is much more of a learning experience. And then next up, this is a uh, kaffir oh, lime. Oh, that's okay. All right, so that's kaffir lime. You know, essentially they're using the zest and uh, citrus zest is one of my favorite ingredients, period. I absolutely love to use citrus zest. And next up, these are cilantro roots. Mm. Oh, I can already really smell that kaffir lime peel. It's so fragrant. All of the pre-preparation is done. We've got all the ingredients ready. It's now time to start pounding. You can kind of just throw everything. We're gonna event- <laughs> Sorry, just, again, this guy's level of, in, of excitement and enthusiasm, and then, you know, it's like, we're gonna start pounding. <laughs> Nothing to do with the dish itself. I just, I find this guy, uh, I, I think this guy's super awesome. That's it. She's first putting in the galangal and then lemongrass. Pound it. Pound and it, one thing I want to mention, this is coriander seeds and cumin, mm. which she just Toast toasted it. in a, dry roasted in a pan just to make it fragrant, just for about 30 seconds over a medium heat. Toasting your spices will always accentuate those flavors, give it a deeper nutty aromas. It really transforms spices. I highly recommend you do that. Recipes don't always call for you to do that, but I promise you most times it will call for you to do that and it just accentuates the flavors and kind of mellows them out as far as like the sharper peaky aromas and flavor profiles, but mellows it out and makes it a deeper flavor and aroma, if that makes any sense. It's, it just, again, it, it keeps the essence of the spice, but it just rounds it out and gives it a lot more depth. Hope I didn't confuse you more by that, but let's keep watching. Now in goes the mm, cilantro roots and the lime peel. This is white pepper mm, corns all go pepper. in. The unsung hero of East Asian cooking, okay guys? Yes, I'm getting more specific. Sometimes I say things that generalize Asia and they'll be like, what about this part of Asia? That, but I'm sorry, sorry. And also the cumin and coriander seeds. I got the okay to just toss in everything. So next, the garlic and the shallots. We're gonna pound all of these ingredients first and then after that, we'll be adding the green chilies. Okay, come. In goes some salt. salt. Okay. I'm gonna start pounding up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mother-in-law is like, yo, you doing this shit. I'm fucking walking off and making the son-in-law do it. And the son-in-law is just like, hell yeah, this is awesome. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while, but I'm gonna tell you that it is so worth it to make your own curry paste. You know, I, am a, I, I mentioned this before, I am no authority when it comes to Thai cuisine. I just know like the real bare basic. Like basically I'll know when someone's fucking it up. <laughs> and I made it a handful of times and I've been meaning to make my own Thai green curry video. Uh, that's gonna come after I do the carbonara video for uh, Vincenzo's plate. Hopefully he checks it out. I think 
what would be really fun is if I did try to replicate this dish straight up say, hey, I'm ma making Mark Ween's Thai green curry. Let's see how it comes out because I am really intrigued and curious by this. This dude's uh, excitement for this is just fucking infectious. I've just been pounding for about five minutes and already you can see how the oils of the lemongrass, the shallots, the garlic, and the kaffir lime peel, all of the oils are coming out. Mm -hmm. It's already smelling incredibly fragrant. It's gonna be delicious. My mouth is already watering <laughs> for the final product. Are you on fucking drugs? What the hell are you taking, dude? <laughs> Next up, we're going to add the chilies. And these are Thai bird's eye chilies, but they are green in color. So if you can get green in color, that's what's going to give your green curry the green color. One more detail she just mentioned is that the green chilies aren't that spicy. Mm -hmm. So she's going to add in a few red chilies as well because the red chilies are a little more spicy. Yeah, so the red chilies are the same as the green chilies. They've just um, ripened more. So the more they ripen, the more capsaicin is going to... Uh, capsaicin is the, you know, the part of the chili that makes it spicy. There's going to be more developed capsaicin in there. Whereas the green chilies, again, it's not fully ripened. It'll definitely be spicy, but not as spicy. So like jalapeno peppers and Fresno peppers are the same thing. Fresnos are just ripened jalapeno peppers. The Fresnos will be spicier than jalapenos, generally speaking. In go See, all of look, look at that. <laughs> In just that one handful, Mark Weens had grabbed more chilies uh, in this one dish than Jamie Oliver has for every single video he's done using any type of chili. <laughs> the dude just does not use enough chilies. Chilies. And I'm gonna probably just add one handful first, pound them up a bit so they don't go flying, and then add some more. Dude, man, what a labor of love. <laughs> I'm sure like a Thai person's watching this and love, love, this is what we do every meal, motherfucker. <laughs> but I understand if you don't have the time, still better than buying store-bought curry paste in a, in a can or something. You can take the same ingredients and you can process them, food process them, blend them up, blend them up maybe with a little bit of water um, to get them going. Um, and then that will be the second best case scenario that will save a lot of time. Cool. So uh, I mentioned that I think in both of my Jamie, Uncle Roger reacts to Jamie Oliver's Thai curries uh, videos where if I was making this uh, in a restaurant scenario where I have to serve hundreds, possibly thousands of portions a week, I would definitely go the uh, food processor route. And Mark mentioned like, yeah, you can do that. It's not the best case scenario, but you can absolutely do that. And then someone in the comments mentioned, hey, you can start it in the food processor and then finish it finish it with the pounding, which is actually, I think, a great way to go about it. You kind of get the best, best of both worlds. You save some labor and time, but you also get some of the benefit of the pounding action. The breaking versus the shredding will give you a, com a different end product. Maybe not noticeable to the average person, but any uh, working professional or someone who has curry, Thai style curries on the regular will definitely notice a difference. The curry paste mm. is good to go. The next step, we've got a nice puree. The next step is to add, the final step is to add the, the shrimp paste. Which, you know, like let's, you know, there's no two ways about it. You know, shrimp paste looks like shit, but it's absolutely delicious. I mean, the key ingredients to a, a good curry. Completely missing from all of Jamie Oliver's videos. I mean, just you can't have a curry Thai style curry without the shrimp paste. Sorry for you guys with shellfish allergies out there, but that's just the fact. It does look like poop though. <laughs> Uh. Kind of smush it all together with that shrimp paste. It should be a nice puree paste. Mm -mm. I love that sound at the end of making your curry paste. It's kind of like a, a squishy sound. <laughs> For this Thai green curry chicken recipe, you can definitely buy chicken pieces mm. or chicken thighs or chicken breasts or whatever type of chicken you want. But we're going to be using a whole chicken and it's a free range chicken. so. Our next step is to wash and clean the chicken. She first chopped off the feet and the head of the chicken, and now she chopped it in half. <laughs> Dude, he's watching the butchering of a chicken, this bloody mess, and he's got this face. Oh, well, no, that's that's a pretty crazy look. <laughs> that's like... That's like Joker right there, but I'm sorry. I, I'm not I'm not making fun of this dude I just I again. I just I, he, like I said, he's just 
one of the happiest people I've ever seen on camera. And he's still maintaining this while, you know, a, a, a chicken is literally being torn apart limb from limb. <laughs> I definitely just got splattered by some chicken juice. <laughs> I just got splattered by, you know, I just got splattered by some chicken juice. So first she's gonna boil that water. And then she said she's gonna put in the curry paste, the chicken and boil that for a while while stirring. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Mom said the curry paste smells really good. Cup one cup me. <laughs> oh my God me. She said it smells really good, the curry paste. So he you put that so curry happy. paste, she'll use most of what we pounded into the water and dissolve that into the water first. Now, uh, if you really think about what's going on with the curry paste itself, again, yes, they pounded it, but what are you doing by pounding or by shredding? They are increasing the surface area. And basically by pounding it like that, pounding all those ingredients, you've maximized the surface area on these ingredients, everything from the dried spices to the kefir lime peel to the cilantro stems. But why is it important to get more surface area, especially for a dish like this, which, you know, for all intents and purposes is like a stew, right? By increasing the surface, surface area, why that's so important is because you are able to extract more of the flavor from arguably that, well, not arguably, but from the same quantity. So rather than extracting flavor from a quantity of uh, a piece this big, which is one whole piece, you broke it up, just completely decimated it, right? Com just shredded it to almost an atom. And all those little pieces are now exposed and you can extract all the flavor. And that is the difference maker. And that's why it's so important for this particular dish and this paste to pound everything and to break it down and increase the surface area. Very cool stuff. That green curry paste is boiling away and it smells incredible. Okay, cop. And now she's adding in all the, the chicken pieces. What I'm noticing that, uh, that I just realized because I was kind of so into the video is I thought that you like kind of saute the paste with the coconut milk first break the coconut milk and then put the pieces in there. But um, in this scenario, they started with water. Very interesting. I haven't done it that way before. This is completely new to me. So let's keep watching. It smells citrusy and you can also really smell those green chilies. And she's moving over to the chopping board now to slice up some capture lime leaves. Oh, putting it in hand. Okay, interesting. Again, something interesting. I thought that would have gone into the paste itself, but instead she's using, she used the peel and left the leaves whole and putting in the, uh, not whole, but chop the leaves, rough chop the leaves and put it into the curry. So again, very different from the way I'm used to it. In addition to the chicken, it's common to add a certain type of vegetable to your green curry. And sometimes you can use like winter melon or you can use an assortment of different kind of tubular vegetables. We're gonna be using Thai eggplant, which is a traditional additive to green curry as well. And then also she's gonna add in some sweet basil right there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the sweet basil and take it off of the stems. Something I want to mention, she's, I think she's cutting on the same cutting board. Technically, you know, in, at least in the States here, if a health department inspector saw that you process chicken on that cutting, the same cutting board and didn't wash it with soap and warm water and dunked it through sanitizer, you, it would be a major violation. I can tell you right now, like basically all of Asia does not give a shit about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. They, they probably just rinsed it with water and moved on. So it's not to say that it's wrong here, but just again, like a difference between the East and the West. Again, nine out of 10 times, they don't give a shit and they just, you know, hey, I cut the chicken now and afterwards I'm gonna cut the fresh produce. Generally, the way I would have it in my kitchens is if you are unable to clean that board, then the way you stage out your prep is by doing all your veggies first and then do the chicken at the end. If you're you planning to use the same cutting board, because then in that scenario, 
the chicken would not cross contaminate if there were sal salmonella on it would not cross contaminate the produce now you can also argue that everything's going into this pot and it's going to go over 160 uh, 100 160 uh, 100 over 140 degree not 140 hundreds yes i was right 160 degrees to kill or over 165 degrees to kill all salmonella but again the health inspector in New York that would come to my restaurant, if I were to explain it to them like that, they would not care. They would issue me the violation regardless. It's more of like a standards of practice. So you don't say like, well, this restaurant's okay to do that because it's gonna go into a stew and this restaurant can't because it's not going into a stew. It's just, again, standardization of, of practice, cooking practices. These chilies are not spicy, but they're sort of more for looks to add some red to your green curry. And then next step is for the the eggplant, the Thai eggplant. She's cutting them into quarters. She's dropping the eggplant into the water so that they don't turn black. Oh, I wish you could smell that steam. Oh. It's been simmering for about 10 minutes or so. She said the chicken is soft now and we're gonna assemble everything. And you can see a lot of the water has, a lot of the liquid has evaporated. So we've got a nice mm. looking like thick curry paste down below there. What I believe is going on here and the idea behind the technique is you saw they started with water, they put in the paste, brought the water to a boil, they put in the paste, they broke up the paste, let it evenly dispersed through the water. I think they brought it back up to a boil before they added the chicken. Essentially, they're stewing the chicken in just this pure water and puree uh, uh, paste mix. They're cooking it until one, the chicken is fully cooked through, but also until the water evaporates, leaving you with just the concentrated, as concentrated of the uh, curry paste as possible. And then it looks like she's about to throw the veggies and stuff, but since you're pretty much down to just the paste, I think that's going to be hot enough and pure enough of that paste flavor where it doesn't taste like um, like in, in uh, Jamie's video where he put the coconut milk at the very end and the coconut milk never broke. It just stayed this you know, homogenized uh, minty green color, whereas a desired, a, you know, something that's desired in a Thai style curry is that the fat had actually separated from the milk solid of the coconut milk, or in this case, the mother-in-law specifically said the coconut cream. So interesting, very interesting. Again, very different from how I was taught and how I learned to make a Thai green curry. Plant first. And give that a nice stir. Mm. And you can see how almost all the water has boiled out. Wow, okay, so the flavors are getting really concentrated now because as Mark Weens explained, the water has pretty much cooked out, leaving you with the pure flavor of the paste. And by now the chicken has really been saturated with the flavors of the paste because it's been stewing in there that entire time. Putting in the eggplant, the eggplant's gonna absorb even more of the moisture. And I think that that's when the coconut cream goes in. It's gonna be relatively dry in there then the coconut cream will separate and give you again, the separation of fats to a milk solids and uh, give you what the desired effect at the end. Next up for the coconut cream. Very Southeast Asian, in bags. And yeah, that's the, that's the coconut bags. cream, the thick, buttery, rich, good stuff. Mm. Wow, it's a lot, okay. That whole bag, holy cow. And she's adding a, about a spoonful of salt. But it's important, you wanna, you wanna taste test the curry because there's a lot of salt and also the shrimp paste in the, the curry paste that we pounded. So you wanna actually taste that liquid first before you add any salt, and then you can add salt to your taste. Okay, we're gonna bring this to a boil, and since the chicken is already cooked, we're just gonna make sure that the the um, eggplant is cooked. So it doesn't really need to boil for very long. The coconut milk has come to a boil. You mm -hmm. add in the sweet basil, give it kind of a little stir, and then she added in the sliced 
uh, red spur chilies that we she chopped up earlier. And then you don't want to really boil it too much longer because you don't want the, the sweet basil to lose its flavor. So you just boil for another minute or so. And we are just about ready to eat. Just look at how thick that is. That's home cooking right From there. From both the, the coconut cream as well as the, the curry paste. In Thai, you call that kem kon mak, meaning it's very thick and rich. <laughs> yes. So I've also got a plate of rice. This is brown rice. I'm going to go in chicken, bite-sized pieces of chicken, basil. Put some of this onto my rice. Put this on there. Get some of the some of that basil as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you can smell that that green like sweet green sweet basil aroma to this as well. All right. And All right. I'm gonna be very honest here, probably an unpopular opinion, but that's not very green. It's not a vibrant, bright green. Also, I was, I'm still kind of surprised how the coconut milk or cream wasn't added in with the paste after the paste has been sauteed. I learned my, cook, my curry cooking technique from my wife, who's Malaysian, Southeast Asian region, very similar techniques, uh, not the same end product. But again, that's a Malaysian style, that's not Thai style. This video really surprised me. A lot. I am still gonna attempt this myself, you know, to the T, but again, very different from what I'm used to. It's not nearly as that brilliant green color as I would have expected. Not, not that it's supposed to be this super brilliant green color, but it's just not as green as I thought it was gonna come out. And that's probably because for this particular recipe, which is much more authentic, it's clearly authentic, it's being made by a Thai mother-in-law in Thailand, appears to be in Thailand. The main component that's supposed to give this green curry its green color just came from the chilies, where I think it's very common in the West to use more of the cilantro leaves and stems and stuff like that, so it accentuates the green color even more. Regardless, I know it's gonna be delicious. I'm just surprised and really intrigued, and I'm really excited to try this recipe. But again, just really kind of shocked in, in a pleasant way. What I'm gonna do in my Thai green curry video is I'm gonna make one where it's exactly like how Mark did it, or Mark's mother-in-law did it rather, and I'm gonna do one with the techniques I was talking about where you cook the paste directly on the pan and then you add in the coconut milk and break it and, and then add your chicken and water. I'm very curious to see what the difference in the end product is because I know it will be different. I am very intrigued and now I wanna watch more Thai green curry videos and really see maybe what I learned, I'm what I'm learned, I'm remembering incorrectly, and I shouldn't be taking the Malaysian techniques over to what I thought about Thai green curry. But again, from what I remember about learning about Thai green curries is that you cook the pan and uh, the paste in the pan and then put in the coconut milk, watch it break and add your chicken. So again, I'm just, I was not expecting this. I keep saying that. I don't want to keep repeating myself. So I'm going to end the video here. You know, I usually grade my videos one out of 10. And now I'm just confused because maybe this entire time, maybe I was, judging Jamie Oliver too damn hard. I don't know. Although his his d curries were definitely epic fuck ups. With that said though, I'm not gonna grade this video because I feel very schooled and now I have to revisit a lot of what I thought I knew about Thai curries. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And I am Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.